Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Street Race Talk, episode number 334, and we changed up the scenery here for this week's episode of Street Race Talk. As you can see, we got some more stuff in the background now, and you might be thinking, Sam, why'd you make this change? I literally moved the camera from there where you saw more behind me to move it to the side here where it's a more zoomed in version of me. And the reason why I did this is because last week's episode of No Prep News, it was just the audio because my face was looking so bad. It still isn't looking the best right now, ladies and gentlemen. But I was looking so bad, I'm like, I can't even put my face on camera this week. So I was sitting there like this. I held the microphone in front of me like this and was sitting here recording the video. And I don't know what it was. I had the stuff up because I initially was going to film the video with my face and decided not to. So the camshaft and koozie were sitting there. And I was sitting here in this like angle I'm in right now. I'm like, I like sitting like this better. So I thought, you know what? Let's move the camera and see how it works out. And honestly, I like it. I think the lighting it looks better rather than having it be over there with all the glare coming in from the outside. Having it be behind my head now. And also, too, you can see more stuff. I like having the camera like this. Let me know which you guys like better. Leave it in the comment section down below. But this week's episode is a big episode of Street Race Talk, ladies and gentlemen, because we are bringing in the finale of this big chief saga that's been going on for, I want to say, the past four to five months, because I do believe the whole America's List situation happened around the end of January. And in this episode, we'll be discussing why Big Chief isn't going to be returning to Street Outlaws. For those that don't know, at the start of this past filming for Street Outlaws America's List, Street Outlaws America's List season number two, the current show we're seeing on TV right now. At the very first race night of the filming, Chief made the decision to walk off the set and leave the show, which ultimately resulted in him leaving Street Outlaws forever. Now, the reason as to why he initially left that filming, the conclusion we have come to here on this channel is that he showed up to that driver's meeting with the proposition to make some changes to the rules. And we assume the main change was get rid of Chase is a race. And as a result of him proposing that change, other people got very upset. There was a verbal conflict as a result of that. Then the result of that conflict was Chief and Jackie leaving the filming for America's List. And as I said, ultimately leaving Street Outlaws in general. Now, we didn't know at first he was going to be leaving all of Street Outlaws because we saw, okay, he just left America's List. But we quickly realized, oh shoot, he's probably leaving the whole thing. Because of the fact of what the 405 show is right now, even though we left America, because we're like, okay, he will still see you on the 405 show. We'll look at the 405 show. What it was for the past two seasons is just qualifying for America's list. Now, it appears things most likely will be changing for this next season. But at the time, we didn't know that. All we knew was the 405 show is qualifying for America's list. If Chief isn't racing America's list, he has no reason then to race in the 405 show. Then with Chief and Jackie posting more on their YouTube channel, doing more stuff on the whole social media stuff outside the whole Street Outlaws realm or world, you could say. And they've kind of made it clear to us that they're really enjoying what they're doing right now. They're perfectly cool with the setup they've got right now, the schedule they've got, the whole program they're running right now. They couldn't be happier with what they're doing right now. And they don't need or necessarily want to return to Street Outlaws. Now, at first, I thought for sure the producers or TV people were going to be like, we've got to keep the name Big Chief. That's the biggest name in Street Outlaws. But honestly, like realizing now that, okay, Chief and Jackie don't want to really return. And it doesn't really seem like, I have no idea about this, but I don't, it doesn't seem like to me that any, or at least from what I've heard, any real efforts have been made to necessarily bring them back. And I think a reason behind that is because of how big of a deal No Prep Kings is in Street Outlaws. And kind of answering the why as to why Chief and Jackie aren't going to be turning to Street Outlaws is because it's gotten, Street Outlaws has gotten too far away from the real street stuff and is focusing too much on No Prep Kings. This is something we've discussed a lot here on this channel recently. And unfortunately, I believe it is the reason as to why they're not going to be returning. And honestly, like you can't even knock Chief or get mad at him for this because you look back in the podcast. There, were, I don't recall which episode it was. I do greatly apologize about that. But I know for a fact that in one of the episodes, Chief said something along the lines of in response to people hating on him saying the TV show wasn't real streets, this and that. He said something along the lines of if the TV show got to a point to where it was too far away from the real street stuff, he would walk away from the TV show. And I believe that is exactly what has happened right here. Because just 
look at Street Outlaws and look at what the street stuff is in comparison to the No Prep King stuff. The No Prep King stuff, you got the big, long, great schedule. Street stuff is crammed in filming within X amount of weeks, and it's very limited the time that they film that stuff. Now, to be fair, like it kind of makes sense because ultimately, No Prep Kings makes the most money for the TV show. It makes the most money for the producers. Makes the most uh, not pr the biz. You know, I hope you get what I mean. It makes the most money in terms of all this street outlaw stuff because you got a tv show that you go out and just film okay you can't you don't have fans there you don't have live attendance you just film the show and make the revenue from the show being aired on tv compared to a no prep kings event you have a live event fans come in you make a bunch of money i assume from tickets and fans being there having it be a live sporting event then you literally just film the event that's already live then put it on TV a couple months later and make revenue from it being just a normal TV show. It makes complete sense on the business side of things as to why Street Outlaws is going the route that it is going. Although, unfortunately, that route is leaving behind what made Street Outlaws successful in the first place. Leaving behind the real street stuff. Look at... I mean, no disrespect to them by saying this, but look at Lizzie Musi, for example. She's a perfect example as to how and when we have seen these changes being made to where the street stuff is pretty much now just i it hurts me to say this but it's becoming just a promotion for no prep kings and i mean no disrespect to lizzie kai pat music their whole racing program i mean no disrespect to them in any way by saying this i personally thought it was really cool when we first saw lizzie on street outlaws fastest in america i believe it was season two when we first saw her on their racing in team noah and i thought it was cool because we got to see the progression of someone who went from being successful at the track to struggling greatly on the street because we always heard people saying oh the street stuff's so easy this and that these track guys will come smoke all of you then we see someone that's been racing on the track for years and has been has success there come to the street and not even make i mean in that whole season of fastest in america did she even make more than three full passes under power and if they were under power were they fast i don't think they were and again i don't mean any disrespect to them because that was a a new situation they were in the new form of racing they had never really done in depth before and you threw lizzie and I believe the aftershock running against some of the biggest, baddest, fastest cars in the country on Street Outlaws fastest in America. So it kind of almost like uh, highlighted her difficulties and her lack of success more than it would have if we had seen it in another show. And I thought it was cool. It was a cool dynamic we had never before seen on Street Outlaws. And I thought, okay, it was cool seeing her on Fastest in America. She was on Team Nola. That's that. I, I was like, okay, if we see her again, I'll probably be on Fastest in America once again in the next season. Although after that, we're seeing her on America's List. And America's List is supposed to be, for season one, it was only the top 20 baddest fastest street raced cars on the planet so why is lizzie musi there in the aftershock after she only raced on the street in one other instance and it was for the filming for street outlaws fastest in america you get what i mean by saying that i don't mean to knock them in any way i enjoyed seeing her on street outlaws fastest in america but seeing her on America's list over other names, I just didn't think was right. And a lot of people agreed with me. You can go back to the videos on my channel. When we first discussed this Street Outlaws America's List show first becoming a thing, we said it's weird that Lizzie's there over other guys, but we came to the conclusion that it makes sense because they're using it to promote No Prep Kings. And that has unfortunately just progressed more and more. We're going to bring Swanstrom up once again in case people think I'm hating on Lizzie too much. We'll bring in my favorite guy from No Prep Kings. He's another perfect example of that. No disrespect to Swanstrom. I personally would like to see him on America's List. If they're going to be plucking guys from No Prep Kings and putting him on America's List, he's the first guy I would want to see there. But why would Swanstrom be on America's List over, like, other... Just the guys from the 4 or 5 that didn't make their top 5 qualifying, why would he be there over them? You get what I mean? If you're standing by this, uh, the, what would it even be called? If you're standing by the thing saying that the America's List, the top 25 baddest street race cars in the country, why would a racer that's net we've never seen street race, race on the that list over someone we've seen on street race, seen street race in the biggest races in the world for more than a decade like you get what i mean by that and i believe chief and jackie have recognized that a hundred percent they're fully aware of where street outlaws is going and they've made the decision that okay it's getting too far gone or it's getting 
too far away from the real street stuff and they made the decision because of the fact that it's essentially just becoming a no prep kings commercial right now they made the decision to step down and leave street outlaws which honestly like i chief and jackie the crow they're my favorite ones to see on street outlaws for the street stuff without a doubt but honestly like it's probably for the better because with the route street outlaws is going with the drivers they've got like sean chuck Lutz, Ryan, Dave, they're perfectly cool with going back and forth with the no prep kings and street stuff. Chief's always made it very clear he doesn't really have real any real interest in not only no prep racing that much, but no prep kings in particular. It doesn't really, it's just not, it's just not for him. He's all about the real street stuff. The other guys are cool going back and forth with that. And because of that, I hope we see both shows continue to succeed. I hope we see no prep kings continue to grow. And I hope we see the street shows continue to grow as well. I hope they don't get too far away from what the street shows are supposed to be and just completely water it down make it just a, so much like so clear that it's just a cookie cutter thing for they're just pulling away guys from no prep kings to use the street show to promote no prep kings i hope it doesn't get to a point like that i hope this street st show still continue to succeed and are still continue to be fun and enjoying to watch because i still like america's list even without chief there but like i said it, it's almost for the better for chief and jackie because we're going to get to see so much more stuff from them. They're going to get out, going to be able to go out and race in so many more events. We're going to be seeing them race all kinds of big tire stuff with the Crow, small tire stuff with Caddy Jack, and much, much more. And the thing is, too, it's not like they're going to have to be worried about, oh, we can't show this in our videos because of potential spoilers for the TV show. It's not going to be, okay, we got to go out and race this race for the next four weeks. We unfortunately won't be able to make any new YouTube videos for you guys because they're not they're not gonna be going out and filming that stuff for the show everything they're gonna be doing is gonna be filmed for like the youtube channel posted in real time it's kind of like i can't even think of how to put it into words because it's so radically different from the stuff we've seen in the past but i hope you guys get what i mean and ultimately to cap this video off i hope you guys have understood kind of the whole reasoning behind all of this and it's, it's essentially just that street outlaws with the street shows have gotten too far away from the real street stuff and it's becoming too much inter I don't think much would have been the proper t grammatical term or word to use right there, but I hope you guys get what I mean. It's becoming too intertwined with No Prep Kings, and they obviously don't like that and felt it was necessary for them to step down and no longer compete on Street Outlaws, but they will be competing on all kinds of other stuff on their YouTube channel, ladies and gentlemen. So make sure you check that out. And one extra thing I want to add here at the end of this video is Chief and Jackie, their efforts to recognize things that are special like the yellow belly race for instance or not race the video they posted this past week of them out testing there the kind of history part they added in that was so cool seeing them add that in and then i'm sure once we see them racing like a cash days like for instance if chief's racing in some big tire caches and the crow in the street put on by limpy or if jackie's racing in some small tire cash days and caddy jack put on by limpy they'll it, they might not do like the whole history thing like that but they'll make a point to say how special that race is and acknowledge what that race has come from which once again is something we've never really seen on the tv show and that is all for this week's episode of street race talk thank you guys all so very much for watching ttve hope you guys enjoyed sorry there was something on the screen there hope you guys enjoyed hope you guys had a great week this week i know i sure did it has been 90 plus degrees the past couple days i couldn't be happier right now ladies done and i hope you like the new setup honestly like i don't know what is i don't know how i was sitting here i'd always hit my knee you hear it i hit my knee on this doorknob right here for this cabinet but now my knees are free as free as can be over here honestly i like showing you guys more stuff here let me know if you like this setup better and like i said that is all thank you all so very much for watching ttv make sure you guys click that little bell turn notifications on so you do not miss a single video that I upload all my videos go live at 6 p.m central standard time and monday nights will be going live at 6 50 p.m central standard time where we will be watching the new episode of street outlaws america's list season number two make sure you leave your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below let me know your thoughts on your reaction to chief leaving street outlaws that's told the why reasoning of it do you agree with what he said do you agree with the reasoning we brought up in this video let me know leave it all in the comment section down below make sure you guys check out midweststreetcars.com and use coupon code sambasxyz for 20 percent off your order first link down the description will take you directly to their store and you guys can go buy these die like i can't believe we're still bringing this up you can go buy these die cast cars on their website for 20 bucks and then 25 bucks signed 
with that discount code, it's even cheaper. So you don't got to buy the ones on eBay that are be, being listed for 4 5x oh my god everything's falling here you guys don't gotta go buy those other ones because they're available on the website and i got 20 percent off for you guys so make sure you go get some of those die cast cards if you haven't already i also set up a p.o box if you guys like to send me stuff address is down below in the description i also got my street race talk merch available under the store tab on the dashboard of my channel go check that out if you guys are interested in that as well but like i said that is all thank you so very much for watching ttve hope you guys enjoyed hope you guys had a great week this weekend i'm looking forward to a great weekend this weekend and i honestly can't thank you guys enough for watching ttve make sure you follow me on instagram at sam xyz don't forget to like and subscribe and this is sam abc xyz signing out